Hi, I'm Dave Talbot. I'm Managing Director, Head of Research here at Red Cloud Securities, and I am joined today by Sky Harbor President and CEO Jordan Trimble. Thank you for taking time to join me today, Jordan. Thank you for having me. Now, welcome to Toronto. Uh, you know, what, what were you most excited to see or do at PDIC this year? Yeah, well, look, it's been a very busy few days, as we know. Uh, good to be back, uh, obviously, after a few year hiatus. It was really good to see everyone, uh, to be honest. Um, uh, we have some new partner companies, as you know, Rio, uh, Valor, a couple others uh, that uh, we've, we've signed options with. So it was good to actually meet people and see people in person. The investor exchange was quite busy, so the, there was a lot of foot traffic at the booth. That uh, was great to connect with with uh, shareholders and uh, the likes of yourself and, and others in Toronto that we've done some some work with or that uh, are investors in the company. So it was yeah, all in it was really really good conference, busy, and uh, actually headed off to a couple more conferences here. Excellent. Yeah, it is a, it is a busy June this year. Uh, yeah, for sure. As we. Uh, we come out of COVID uh, lockdown. So, but before we get started, perhaps uh, give us a, a bit about your background. How sure. did you get uh, in, in interest in the exploration industry? Yeah, so I've been working in the industry now for well over 10 years. Um, I started at a gold company called Bayfield Ventures, which you may recall had projects uh, in Ontario. We had success with that company. We, we took it from a discovery through resource delineation. Ultimately, we sold it to New Gold, and, and uh, that's when uh, my team and I came in and started running uh, Sky Harbor Resources. I really saw a contrarian opportunity in the uranium sector and, and started building the company up. I come from a finance and entrepreneurial background, a CFA charter holder, sit on the board of the, the Vancouver Society, and I've worked uh, with various companies uh, throughout my career uh, uh, in different roles, uh, including officer and director roles, and uh, yeah, pr uh, happy to be the, the president and CEO of Sky Harbor Resources. We've come a long way in the last eight, nine years since we started the company, and uh, we've got a lot to look forward to going forward. Yeah, how, how would you describe the changes in industry since you started the company as to now? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, certainly the way in which we find these mineral deposits, uh, it's come a long way. There's a lot, we've talked about this in the past, the, the, the tools at our disposal to go out and find them. Um, I think commodities in general, metals in general, um, you know, the world is really waking up to the significance of mining. Um, the importance of it, uh, it, in particular more recently with um, some conflict globally, supply disruptions as we've seen, um, I think uh, uh, the having these uh, energy independent uh, countries and states, in, in, in our case given it's uranium and energy metal, that's, that's quite significant. Uh, having, um, uh, being able to produce um, domestically, right, uh, security of supply domestically and and, and really uh, working in good jurisdictions. Um, you know, we, we've seen this trend obviously uh, more recently towards mining exploration uh, and development in uh, safe and geopolitically friendly jurisdictions. Well, you, you talk about jurisdiction and you're active in the Athabasca Basin. So what actually attracted you to work in the basin? Yeah, there's a number of reasons that, that we uh, honed in on the basin. Uh, again, obviously jurisdiction, it's, it's been ranked as the uh, number two mining jurisdiction by the Fraser Institute recently. Uh, but also, in as you know, uh, the Athabasca Basin, uh, it's the highest grade depository of uranium in the world. It's really, as far as I'm concerned, the only place that you want to be looking for uh, developing and producing uh, uranium in. And uh, we've seen a number of uh, notable high grade discoveries in the last 15 years. Uh, that's certainly what drew us in. Uh, the kind of quick wealth uh, and value creation that uh, shareholders uh, benefit from when we go out and we find these high grade uh, deposits in the basin. Um, so yeah, there's a, a number of reasons and um, uh, I, I'd say, you know, going forward again, getting back to um, good, good jurisdictions like Canada, like Saskatchewan, I think that that's going to become even more paramount going forward. Right, right, okay. So Sky Harbor is known as a project generator, and typically those are companies that, uh, you know, do a lot of the early groundwork, you know, stake the projects, uh, and then, then they essentially shuffle them off to somebody else to do the work. But Sky Harbor seems to be a little bit more. You have resources yourself, you've got some, uh, a lot of potential on some advanced projects mm -hmm. and you are even acquiring more advanced projects. How do you see Sky Harbor positioning itself in this paradigm? Yeah, well look, um, we offer all of those, uh, which I think is quite unique and, and I think, um, you know, investors can see that, um, you know, we, we are multifaceted really. 
uh, fairly unique to Sky Harbor. You know, first and foremost, we are high-grade discovery and exploration story. So we have our core projects, flagship Moore Lake, South Falcon Point, and more recently, and contiguous to our flagship, Moore Lake is Russell Lake. So you can think of it as a co-flagship now going forward. We're actively advancing these projects, drilling, uh, offering that high-grade discovery potential to investors. Uh, as a secondary uh, business um, and component to the company of prospect generation. And so we've got a dozen other projects, as, as you're well aware, and five of which we, we have joint venture option partners on. We are actively looking to option or JV out some of the under, uh, other 100% owned projects. But it, it's a great complement to the main business of um, explore, high-grade exploration in the basin. Right. Let, let's talk about some of those JVs then. You said you have five JVs that you're uh, working with. You know, using other people's money is a great way to preserve cash for your own till. Uh, but, you know, what are the benefits to, let's say, Sky Harbor uh, for having other people work on these projects? Maybe provide some color on some of those JVs. Yeah, look, there's uh, a, a list, a long list of reasons, uh, the, the, the benefits uh, to having this and to having option and joint venture partners. Um, First and foremost, uh, if they go out and they make a discovery, um, we'll benefit significantly, right? Uh, having 15, 20, 30 percent of a major discovery in the Athabasca Basin's uh, probably worth some multiple of our current market cap. So having multiple irons in the fire, um, allowing these other companies to go out, spend their money, um, bringing new eyeballs, uh, ge geologists to the table, technical people to the table to help um, refine, pick targets, um, uh, certainly helps. Um, Got a lot of, of, of good technical people be, between all the combined uh, partner companies with, again, the two JV partners in Arano and Azincourt and the three option partners in Ballard, Basin, Uranium and Madero. Um, uh, in total, we have uh, upwards of almost 20 million in exploration expenditures with these partner companies, um, uh, potentially upwards of over 10 million in cash payments coming in. So there's another benefit. It's, it's a way for us to raise money without uh, having to continuously go to the market. Uh, and last but not least, and, and again, I'd say uh, certainly one of the uh, more notable benefits for us currently in the call it the last few years, we end up owning a, a fairly large position in uh, these companies, assuming they're public. And uh, so our shareholders get exposure through owning shares of Sky Harbor to these other companies. Um, so yes, it's, uh, it, it's a great business. Um, we've really grown it in the last several years. And as I mentioned, we are uh, looking to bring in additional partners uh, at some of the other projects. Okay. Maybe talk about a couple of those, you know, or uh, how many other projects are you looking to JV out? Yeah, so we did um, add to our land position. So just to recap, we've got 15 projects, one of the largest land holdings uh, in the Athabasca Basin, um, over 450,000 hectares, ranging from earlier stage grassroots properties right through to more advanced stage exploration assets with resources. Um, we, we acquired through staking and uh, more recently in December here, uh, several other projects that were we own 100% of that we're looking to option out. Um, uh, so those are properties that whether we do it property by property or bundle them up, we are talking with a few groups. Um, South Falcon Point, uh, even though it's been 100% owned core projects, got a resource. We have interest uh, from potential partners in that project. And so again, we've, we've got inventory of property that we can look to uh, uh, option out uh, and monetize. Mm -hmm. The uranium sector, uh, especially in the Athabasca, has heated up mm -hmm. this year, and it, you know there look, looks to be a lot of competition for acquiring new ground. Are you still looking for new ground, and, and how hot is that competition? Yeah, um, we always are. Um, I will say a lot of the low-lying fruit's been plucked, as you can imagine. I mean, companies like Sky Harbor that have been around for a while, been through the the tough years. I mean, that was really that was one of the reasons that we started the company when we did was we saw this contrarian opportunity. We were able to start building the the asset base at really pennies on the dollar, right? So a lot of the good ground. Um, has has already been plucked, right? A company, it's already in um, uh, uh, various companies' portfolios. So we are always looking. We just did this deal, major deal with Rio Tinto, as you know, at Russell Lake. Um, this is a project, though, that's been around for years. Um, and so to go out there and stake big swaths of land uh, that are prospective, it's it's obviously become more and more difficult. Yeah, that's a former Hathor project. Right? It is, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And and uh, as I said earlier, it's, it ties in very nicely with our existing mm -hmm. portfolio. Think of it as a, a co-flagship, given that it's contiguous with our, our current flagship, Moore Lake. Yeah, and I guess, you know, the way you're thinking about, uh, you know, how the changing methodologies over the years uh, are, are one way that you can come around or, or get around the low-hanging fruit 
issue is is uh, just that you know uh, Hathor had another project that was off conductor for example yes and, and, yep. you know so uh, you know I, I think maybe discuss a little bit of some of those uh, ways you're trying to find things that hasn't been done in the past yeah yeah so um, you know as I pointed out we've uh, seen a number of new discoveries made some new geological thinking and modeling you know first and foremost Historically, um, most of the drilling and exploration was focused on uh, sandstone or unconformity hosted targets. So looking in the underlying basement rocks has yielded some major discoveries like Arrow uh, and uh, PLS and, and the Griffin deposit uh, at the Wheeler River project, which is uh, Denison's flagship project, uh, also uh, contiguous to uh, Russell Lake. Um, so we, we've been looking a little bit deeper in the basement rocks at some of the projects, and including uh, our flagship Moore Lake project. We are planning to do that at Russell Lake. Um, certainly, the, you know, the geo geophysical techniques, um, our geological modeling, our understanding of the rocks have become a lot better, um, and that certainly helped lead to uh, a number of discoveries. Um, you know, we, we can identify certain indicator minerals, um, clays, and uh, we can we can then hone in um, on on these uh, deposits. So uh, yeah, the exploration uh, in the basin has come a long way. We've we've seen that um, now yield a number of notable discoveries, and, and we're looking to make the next uh, major discovery, ho hopefully at Russell Lake and more. Yeah, knowledge and experience in the basin is important. Absolutely, so yeah. It, it leads to discovery. So, mm -hmm. would, would therefore you consider looking at uh, projects outside of the Athabasca? We have, and and we will. Um, you know, it's not to say that we wouldn't um, uh, go and acquire a project outside of the basin, but as we talked about earlier, um, you know, the Athabasca Basin just has such a unique set of uh, characteristics that make it so attractive to work in. Um, as an exploration and early stage development company, again, for us, um, really, is as far as I'm concerned, it's the best place to be looking for uranium. Uh, and uh, so right now we're, we're very much focused in the Athabasca Basin. Yeah, and specifically Moore Lake, which is yes. your, your project, uh, your, your flagship project. Uh, do you see yourself as still a discovery company or are you now in sort of the delineation, resource delineation? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I'd say at Moore Lake, um, we're, we're transitioning, right, uh, from an exploration or discovery story to more of a resource delineation story. Now that being said, um, it, for everyone that's followed the drilling over the last four or five years, you've seen that um, we went into this project in 2017, um, uh, did the deal with Denison. Denison's uh, still a very large shareholder of Sky Harbor, a strategic partner. Dave Cates mm -hmm. is on our board and uh, we went in there and uh, we, we had some early success. We, we had numbers um, from the first few uh, drill programs, size 21% U308 over a meter and a half, and, and uh, that was within six meters of 6%. We made a new high-grade discovery at what's called the Ever uh, Maverick East Zone. And uh, we were continuing to find uh, high grade uh, in the sandstone uh, at the unconformity, as had been found historically there. And then we transitioned to um, discovering more high grade in these underlying basement rocks. And actually just last year uh, announced our highest grade uh, drill result, uh, just under 7% U308 mm -hmm. over two meters uh, at the Maverick East Zone in the basement rock. So um, we, we, it's an advanced stage exploration project. There's still a lot of discovery potential there. Uh, there's robust exploration upside potential especially at the Maverick zone and some other targets on the project uh, but uh, you know there is a resource there and we are working towards a resource estimate at the project um, there's certainly uh, interesting now with some of these new mining methods uh, ISR and Sabre that are being proposed yeah. in the Athabasca Basin um, and so it's it's a, it's been a great uh, project for us I still think there is a ton of value uh, that we can unlock there and again given the the deal that we've just done with Rio on Russell Lake the contiguous uh, property uh, we're going to be co-advancing these projects going forward. Excellent. Now what are some of the takeaways from your winter drill program that just passed and uh, what else do you have planned at, at Moore Lake this year? Yeah so um, we we still have assays pending um, and uh, we, we were but we were very happy with what we were seeing. Um, this Maverick corridor which has really been the focus of the exploration and the drilling uh, has continued uh, to return high-grade results and so we're continuing to find additional high-grade zones of mineralization at depth in the basement rocks, especially at Maverick East. Uh, but we've also tested some, some new targets, uh, Grid 19, as you and I have talked about. Um, we're finding anomalous mineralization there, and, and we, we do think there is uh, the potential for, certainly the potential for a uh, high-grade uh, high deposit. I, I think we're, we're quite close there uh, to, to making a new discovery. Uh, the Maverick, getting back to the Maverick corridor, it is a 
call it five on just under five kilometer long corridors. Um, so only about a half of that's been systematically drill tested, uh, and certainly uh, there's a lot of room to move uh, across the entire corridor at depth yeah, in these underlying yeah. basement rocks. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, there's still we think a lot of value that we can unlock there. We do have plans to continue drilling it um, at, at, the, at various targets. There's a dozen other regional targets at the property outside of the uh, the Maverick corridor. So, again, when we get back to drilling there uh, this year, we will continue advancing it and, and focusing it on these higher priority target areas. You, you, you've mentioned these higher priority target areas. What is drawing you to some of those areas? You know, they're off the conductor, or sorry, should say they're off the the uh, the main conductor. Right. Uh, but there's disruptions. There's conductors in their own right, but there are disruptions. What are you looking geologically for? Yeah. Um, so grid 19 is the one that we've been focused on more recently. That's uh, it's it's a ways from the the main Maverick corridor up to the northeast. It is on a, a conductive corridor that uh, basically splits um, we, we, the the alteration structure indicator minerals are all there, uh, and it's only been. Um, uh, tested with a few drill holes historically, including several holes that we uh, that we drilled last year. So it's uh, it's still a, a, a relatively greenfields target that we think again uh, can deliver a new high grade discovery at the project. Okay, and you are targeting a resource estimate by late next year. Yeah, this year. Uh, this year this yeah, year? yeah. We are working towards that now that we've got um, uh, the 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 deal for Russell Lake done. Um, and uh, again, as I mentioned, we're going to be uh, co advancing these projects. We are looking to. Uh, issue a, a resource estimate uh, at some point later this year. Do you have a resource size in mind when you think about how you're going to develop something up in the Athabasca? And you, you know, you talked about Saber and, and mm -hmm. ISR, which hasn't been used in the basin before, but potential uh, ways to extract. Yeah, so. um, it, it's a great question. It's a it's a tough question to uh, answer, needless to say. But um, yeah, I mean, look, we we with some of these new mining methods, as you know, you, you certainly don't need a, a big monster deposit um, uh, potentially, right? And so, we would like to find uh, as much as we can to issue a resource estimate that's as large as possible. Um, and and again, I, getting back to the potential at Moore Lake, um, you know, it's got all the right ingredients and geology to host one of these you know major mega deposits uh, traditional Athabasca Basin deposits but there's still work to be done there to continue uh, advancing it and delineating additional pounds. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned Russell Lake a few times right you know you're, you're working towards an initial 51 percent mm -hmm. uh, coming from Rio Tinto what drew you to that project? What's the story there? Yeah, so we've been uh, looking at this project for several years. Uh, we've had it in our, our crosshairs, if you will, for a little while. Uh, I've been negotiating with Rio for, for a while. Uh, you know, finally got, um, I, I think, uh, very attractive terms, uh, especially for this 51% initial earn-in. Very manageable. Uh, we're thrilled to have Rio um, as a large shareholder uh, and strategic partner going forward as a part of the deal. Um, and uh, it's a project that, um, you know, my geological team uh, knows very well. Um, there's been a fair bit of historical exploration, but again, most of this exploration and drilling was carried out well over a decade ago, right? So we were testing, um, you know, very specific target types. Um, and so now with uh, some, some new modeling, some new thinking, and certainly some new uh, techniques and tools in the field, you know, we think we can go in there and, and, and find a, a very large deposit. Now there is uh, some historical high grade in drill core, um, and, uh, and we're looking to follow up on some of those targets, but it's a big property, uh, over 72,000 hectares. Um, it is very strategic in terms of its location. So as I mentioned, we have our Moore Lake project to the to the east. We have uh, Wheeler River uh, to the to the west, um, and uh, to the north you have MacArthur River, and to the south you have Key Lake. And the road that connects the the, the mill uh, with the mine runs through the western uh, border uh, at our project, uh, along with power. And it also comes with a 40-person exploration camp. Okay. So this is a I think a key, key component, um, uh, certainly for our exploration and drill costs going forward, we'll benefit from that. There's a lot of operational synergies with uh, Russell and more, as I pointed out. So uh, we're, we're, we're very excited to get to work there. Um, we've got some, uh, some fresh ideas that we're going to be testing. Um, and uh, again, uh, it's great to have Rio uh, as a, a shareholder and potentially as a, a partner uh, at the project as well going forward. Excellent. Excellent. You're, you're uh, south. Falcon uh, 
uh, uranium and thorium project. You know, that's another 100% owned project. You are doing geophysics on it right now. But that's a, that's the only project you actually have resources on right now. Currently. It's 7 million pounds of uranium, yeah. uh, 5.3 million mm -hmm. pounds of thorium. What What is the end goal for this project? You know, is this to explore it yourself or do you want to JV that one as well? Yeah, I mean, we've um, kind of gone back and forth on this. You know, should we uh, advance? I mean, needless to say, we're doing the work on it now, which will um, just refine some of the... Uh, uh, regional targets of the project that the, obviously the main uh, zone the Fraser Lakes uh, zone B deposit um, is really the focal point uh, at the project um, and it has that NI 43 101 inferred resource right at surface um, so that's an asset that we have that's pounds in the ground um, but the project has a lot of conductors it has a lot, a lot of other targets that are perspective um, once we complete this program, you know, we'll make a decision. Um, there is interest uh, given um, it's an advanced stage exploration project um, and uh, has a lot, still has a lot of upside potential. So I, I could see us uh, doing a deal on it at some point um, in uh, later this year, early next year. And, and uh, we, we do want to see that project advance. It's, I still think there's a lot uh, of value we can unlock or a partner company can unlock there going forward, uh, spending sure. some money in the field. Great. Okay. Uh, just a couple cor corporate questions to yeah. wrap up, I guess. You know, you trade on the TSX, V, uh, the OTC, Frankfurt as well. Uh, wh where is your, uh, wh where's most of your shareholders residing? And I guess what, what's your liquidity like? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we've seen, um, uh, for the most part over the last couple of years, a pretty decent market. Obviously, there's been volatility recently, but um, we've certainly seen interest pick up um, in uh, in the uranium sector, um, it's been widespread. I'd say it's you know it's all over. Uh, we've we've obviously got a lot of shareholders here in Canada. Certainly, we've seen a pickup in interest in the U.S. Um, and and uh, the volumes on on our OTC uh, listing. Um, we've 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 developed and cultivated uh, more of an institutional following uh, over the last several years. A number of uranium funds, as well as uh, both of the uranium mining ETFs, uh, the Sprott ETF and the Global X ETF. Uh, so we have seen the liquidity uh, pick up quite a bit, and and uh, and then uh, last but not least, um, you know, management and insiders. We've been actively purchasing shares. Uh, I've been quite uh, quite busy in the open market. Um, I just see there being uh, amazing an amazing value proposition uh, right here, right now, um, and uh, I will continue to do so. Okay. So uh, ultimately, what's your exit strategy? You know, do you, do you, at what point do you decide to sell the company versus maybe just vend off some of these uh, these winning projects? Um, I, you know, I'd say, look, I think as we get uh, further into uh, this bull market, I do think it will be a sustained uranium bull market. Um, the underlying fundamentals for this commodity are very unique um, and so I think we're, we're still very much in the early innings uh, so as we see the uranium price tick higher uh, I think that'll put us at a, in a position hopefully at a much higher valuation to uh, ultimately look to potentially sell the company um, until then you know we will continue to uh, try to monetize uh, the, the secondary projects as a part of our prospect generator business I, I would also like to um, deliver a new discovery um, um, and or continue uh, advancing the um, Moore Lake uh, and uh, South Falcon Point and now Russell Lake projects um, so that we can uh, hopefully have a much higher share price. And uh, at that point, yes, you know, the end goal here is to ultimately sell the company. Sounds good. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me today, Jordan. Thank you, Dave. Always a pleasure. Okay. Jordan Trimble, CEO of Sky Harbor Resources. I'm Dave Talbot, Managing Director at Red Cloud Securities. Thank you.